Hey, good evening, man. Good evening. Good evening again. I just want to thank you guys so much for rocking with your boy and rocking with me on the Conversation 9-8. I'm glad and happy and blessed to be back on again, and I'm uh, excited about being before you. So hope all is well with you guys today, man. All has been well with me, and I'm looking forward to the conversation for tonight. Um, uh, again, man, just grateful. Um, I know it's been hot for a lot of people, especially down south with that weather. Uh, I've been enjoying our weather up here. Uh, no complaints on my end, but all in all, just happy and grateful. Uh, looking forward to having this discussion tonight. Uh, tonight has been a good, uh, I think tonight is, is one thing that has been, uh, I think the night conversation is going to be a real good one. Uh, inspired again by a good friend of mine I work with. Shout out to him. I know he don't want me to say his name, but I uh, just wanted to say, hey, man, I appreciate you inspiring me to, uh, talk about this and have this discussion. But uh, truly excited about tonight. Miss Fikes, how you doing? Good evening to you. Good evening. Thank you again. Thank you again for, for tuning in. Uh, definitely excited and looking forward to this conversation because the night conversation is going to be one that I think be very helpful. Uh, not only to, I think it's just helpful to have this dialogue because a lot of times we don't have this dialogue. We don't have these discussions. And I think that because we don't, uh, I think it leaves us in a lot of positions to where uh, many people suffer in silence. Uh, but not only not only suffer in silence, but um, many people suffer in silence and, and feel like they're isolated and don't uh, have a have an outlet to uh, discuss and talk about it and work through these things. So let me know where you're tuning in from. Make sure you share this and interactive, and we're gonna go ahead on and really get into it. Uh, get into this uh, uh, conversation for tonight because um, it's a it's a real good one. We're going to talk about tonight. Is your breakthrough is dependent on your willingness to be accountable to your trauma. And so many times we don't like to be accountable to our trauma. We like to uh, pass our trauma on. And and I and, and what I mean is, I understand that a lot of things. When I say trauma, I'm talking about traumatic things that may have happened to you. For the majority of us, we had nothing to do with our trauma. Our trauma was placed on us by somebody else's decision, may have been placed on us by somebody else's decision or action. And I can understand that can be hard to deal with. But the reality is, is that even though it happened to you, you have to be the one responsible for your journey or your choice to come out of that and overcome it. So, so many times is our breakthrough really depends on how willing we are to be accountable to first acknowledge that it happened to us, right? Second of all, be willing to do the work to overcome the things that may have uh, or caused pain to us because that's where we get our breakthrough at. That right there is where we find our breakthrough. That right there is where we uh, uh, are able to uh, get to a good space uh, so that we can start working through a lot of these things. Hey, what's going on, Elizabeth? How you doing? Thank you for tuning in. But again, that's where it's at because, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of us have dealt with things that has really had an impact on our lives. And we've invested a lot of time, energy and effort to hide it uh, or conceal it from other people. In our mind, we think we're hiding it. But the reality is other people end up having to deal with uh, the 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 outcome or they have to deal with the 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 consequences of the trauma that happened to you and is it fair to them you know because many times when we're dealing with trauma what tends to happen is we attempt to uh avoid it but in our avoidance of it we become to be overburdened or, or overbearing to other people that are connected to us and our breakthrough comes when we are willing to say hey i got to deal with this i got to be accountable for first of all what happened to me but next, I got to be accountable to doing the things so that I can overcome it because it's necessary. I promise you it's necessary. Now, many people like the like the uh, we've used the word trauma. We use that very loosely. That's a very loose term. Right. And I'm not dismissing uh, uh, mental health because mental health is real. And I'm, I'm not I'm not dismissing that. But what I am saying is many of us now is it seems to be that people are using the term mental health as a way of, of being a crutch for them not to be accountable to the things that happen to them. 
Yeah, it's, it happens. But now I, I just say I have a mental health issue because we've raised awareness for mental health, but that doesn't give us an excuse not to work through it. Yes, I acknowledge that it happened to you, but are you going to continue to allow that to have control over your life due to your unwillingness to be accountable to what happened to you and being willing to do the work to overcome that, to be willing to put that work in, to be willing to face it, whatever it is, to be willing to go seek help and get the help that you need so that you can overcome that because it is possible for you to overcome it. You just have to be willing to do the work. You have to be willing to do the work. You just have to. And I know it's a, it can be scary, but it, it is so important that we be willing to do the work uh, because that's that's so necessary. Our unwillingness to do the work is the reason why many of us stay stuck in the state that we are in. And our trauma be, holds us in a, a uh, imprison us to stay in the state of, of being defeated. For years upon years, and some of us, we even go to our grave defeated because we were unwilling to be accountable to our trauma. And what I mean by saying accountable to your trauma, I'm not saying you are responsible for your trauma. What I am saying is that it happened to you. So you now, it is your responsibility to do the work so that you can overcome it. You can overcome it. You can deal with it. Yes, it, it 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 shaped you. Yes, it had you had some some tough experiences with it. I'm never saying forget it, but what I am saying is it should not hinder your future because you are unwilling to address it in your present. And that's what I'm speaking towards. That right there is is what I am speaking towards with that, right? And and and, and I mean because I think that that is so necessary, not only necessary but that it hinders many of us uh, today because uh, many of us today are so afraid to address that trauma because we did so much, we invested so much time, energy, and effort to suppress it that it becomes scary even if with the thought of having to revisit it. The thought of having to not only revisit it, but even acknowledge that something may have happened to you. Now, I'm not speaking, I'm not being insensitive towards because some people have had some very traumatic things to happen to them. And everybody has different levels of stuff that happened to them. But what I am saying is uh, we shouldn't get to a space to where we become imprisoned or we become paralyzed and uh, uh, emotionally uh, paralyzed because we are afraid to address what actually happened. And address and what happened a lot of times the breakthrough comes when we just get to a space to where we're willing to say you know what i'm going to address it i'm no longer going to run from it but i'm going to address it and start dealing with it you're right liz uh fear does paralyze and fear paralyzes us and and i and i'm glad that you brought that up that's a very good point that's a real good point because um one of the things with trauma and one of the things how I would say the enemy uses trauma is to get us in a, a, a space of perpetual fear. And that fear imprisons us. And what what it what it scares us, that fear does is it 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 imprisons us from dealing with or getting to the root cause of it. Because think about this. Uh, there's many times in the Bible where God asks the questions, will thou be made whole? Will you be made whole? And the reason why I love that and, and, and I love about that is because it's about, are you not, I don't want to deal with the symptoms. See, we'll get so comfortable with dealing with the symptoms of our trauma because, but, but never get to the root cause. We don't get to the root cause to heal. We get comfortable with managing our symptoms and just getting comfortable with managing our systems. That's not, that's not uh, living, the, uh, being able to live and walk in the abundance of life that, that is promised to us. It's never said life is going to be easy, but you can be whole. You can be whole. That is, that is something that we all can achieve. We all can achieve it. I mean, dead serious, it is definitely achievable. It's achievable, but it takes some work. It takes some work. And the problem is many of us are too afraid to uh, do that work. Now, overcoming your trauma is not going to be easy. Overcoming the things that may have happened to you and things that have impacted your life is not going to be easy. And I'm not suggesting that it's going to be easy, but it is necessary. 
Uh, it's going to take some work. It's going to it's going to cause you to have to face some things that you may not have faced before or been unwilling to face before. But I tell you, just going through and dealing with things about the reality of, of, of things that even in my own personal life, what I realized was there were some things I was afraid to face and deal with. But when I got the courage and, and built up the courage um, to deal with it, what I realized was I wasted a lot of time, energy and effort and years being afraid to address things that when I finally addressed it, boom, I was able to overcome it and, uh, and change it in a short matter of time where I thought that I would never been able to. But because I was willing, that's where I got my breakthrough. Because I was willing to say, you know what, I'm not going to let this control me anymore. You, and, 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 you know, we just had to get tired of being sick and tired. We got to get to a space to where we say, hey, I'm not going to let this impact me anymore. I'm tired of this thing having control over me. I'm not going to allow the thing that happened to me in my past to impact my present and hinder my future. I'm not going to give that permission. I'm not going to give it permission because guess what? This is my life. And so many times we give our trauma, we give our trauma full access and control over our lives. We allow, because we are unwilling to deal with it, we allow our trauma to influence our decisions. And our decisions has an impact on the on our, uh, our choices have an impact on our future because, be, because we make those choices today, we have to deal with the consequences of them later. So guess what? What we might as well need to do is say, I'm no longer going to allow the, my fear <clears throat> to deal with my trauma to impact my future. I'm going to take control and I'm going to face it. I'm going to face it and I'm going to overcome it. I'm going to face it and I'm going to overcome it. Um, and, and But the, the reality is, you know, many people don't feel like, you know, they become so accustomed to their trauma where they begin to identify by their trauma because many people begin to seek uh, sympathy for their condition and they have their mindset they become entitled uh entitled to uh people feeling sorry for them because they begin to identify by the thing that hindered them their trauma and that is a scary place to be in when we begin to identify by the symptoms of our trauma because we are unwilling, unwilling to deal with the root cause or to even address the root cause or even face what put us in that condition. And a lot of things can change if we get to a space to say, I am, I'm no longer going to allow this to have control over me. It, it is time for us to take up our bed and walk, stop identifying by that and say, you know what, I'm going to address it because it's not as hard as you think. It's not as hard as you think. It is hard, but it's not as hard as you think. It's not as hard as you may be given uh, given something uh, um, credit for or given something space for. It's it, it's not hard, but it, you know, but it's not easy. Uh, and, and that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Hey, a lot of the things in life that we realize that are good for us will not come easy. They will not come easy. Uh, they will. Some of them may seem insurmountable because because we are unwilling to do the work that's necessary, that's required. But the thing I realize is that as we make ourselves do some things, because there's a, that some things that are good for you, we're never going to choose to do it, you know. But the things that are bad for us, it seems to be easy because they are enticing to us. But the things that are good for us, what we have to do is sometimes we got to make ourselves do stuff we don't want to do, so we can reap the benefits of it. And many, many of us, when we're talking about trauma and things in our lives, guess what? We have to do the work to be willing to address it so that we can reap the benefits of overcoming it and, and then having that as a lesson learned so that when we move forward in our life, it's not a weight, but it is an asset to us. It's not a weight, but it becomes an asset. And you say, okay, how I become an asset? Um, it can become an asset. Um, when overcoming our trauma can become an asset when we start to address it and deal with it because those lessons learned uh, in those in, in that experience enable us to walk with a certain not only a confidence but a certain level of wisdom as we move forward and navigate uh, our lives going forward now we can also use that experience to 
uh, assist others and speak life into others who are going through similar things. And there's a level of empathy that is ha that, that can connect with that when we uh, uh, overcome those things and we face our trauma. Now we're able to be uh, a lender helping hand to somebody else that's dealing with something similar and just let them know that, hey, look, and we can speak down to the details on, hey, this is how this happened or this is why this is necessary or these are the steps and this is what you can this is what you're feeling right now. And you don't even realize that your burden became a blessing to somebody else. You know, your burden became a blessing to somebody else. You know, that's what the Bible says. Count it all joy when you face various trials because the testing of your face produces, right? Produces, right? And, that, and that's one thing that I think a lot of us don't get. I think we, we overlook that. But uh, there is something that is profound that happens when you become willing to face and do the work to address those things, those those hardships to address those traumatic experience, to address those strongholds, to address those things in our lives that are holding us back. Right. There is something that comes from that. It is produced from that, because the thing about all of it is if we understand about growth and we're understanding about uh, um, um, planning, right, something the seed when you put the seed in the ground, the seed has to die in order for it to birth out growth before it roots can go down. And a lot of times what happens with us is that we, when we say I'm willing, that's when we are dying to ourselves and we are allowing ourselves the space to say, I'm going to move forward to address this. And from our willingness, that unlocks and produce the abundance that comes from our willingness to address that trauma. I mean, seriously, I mean, dead seriously, dead seriously. And I know I'm talking general, but I'm finna speak some things be specific on some things so that it can encourage somebody. It can encourage somebody. Listen, a lot of things. There are there are a lot of things that we have to may have had to deal with in our past. There's a lot of things we may have had to uh, overcome. There's a lot of things we may have had to endure. Right. And a lot of people don't know your story. A lot of people don't know the heartbreak that you had. A lot of people don't know the disappointments that you had to, to, to endure. A lot of people don't know that feeling of, of, of defeat. You know what I'm saying? That feeling of loneliness, the feeling of abandonment. The 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 uh, a lot of people have to deal, we've had to deal with things that have happened to us, right? And we've carried that thing in our lives for so long, and we smile and we go on and we you know we present like we got it together. But I will tell you that that weight that you carry in silence, you can no, you no longer have to carry that weight. You can choose to say, you know what? I'm looking for my breakthrough, and your breakthrough is dependent on your willingness to be accountable to that trauma and face it, and face it. Because, because this right. Just because it happened to you, just because that traumatic experience happened to you, that doesn't mean that it is your fault. And, and it's a struggle for many of us to try to uh, even be willing to address it because we feel guilty that it was our fault or we caused it to happen to us. So we deserved it. No, that is not the truth. That's not the truth. You didn't deserve what happened to you. You didn't deserve that. You're not responsible for it. You're not responsible for it happening to you, but you are responsible for what you do to so that you can overcome it. And a lot of the things with that, I'm telling you, we just had to get to a space to where I say, you know what? I'm tired of this having control over me. So it, I'm ready to address it and deal with it. By me being ready to address it and deal with it, I can eventually, I will eventually start seeing the, 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 the breakthrough of me overcoming it. of me overcoming it. and I, this thing go deep man i'm talking about it goes deep it goes deep very deep very deep and there's a lot of things that have happened there's things that happen um and i can remember this uh i remember that i went through a divorce and it was a very a very rough year for me uh, between 2007 and uh, 2006 and 2007, uh, arguably the worst year of my life 
I was deployed, going through a divorce, dealing with a lot of things, and I was angry. I was upset, and I was asking God all of these questions, and I was asking God, why me? Why now? And God kept saying, why not? And I did not like that at all. I had an issue with God. I cared. I, I, I had an issue with God. I was, I was frustrated because I felt like, you know, what you mean, why not? I mean, I've been serving you. I've been doing all of this stuff for you and, and you allowing this to happen to me. And it didn't I, di I didn't understand the assignment until later, because later, because I went through that experience and I had to go through that experience to understand true forgiveness and understand a lot of other things. Now I'm able to speak about this in the capacity of healing, because if I'd never been hurt, I didn't I wouldn't understand the process of what it takes to heal. Now I can speak from, from, from a position of, I know what it takes. I can speak from experience and not just from a book. I can speak from experience and not just from what somebody else told me. I can speak from knowing what it's like to, uh, uh, to wanna cry at night, but you can't cry no more and it feels like you got a knot right here in your throat, but you just sit there and just cry to yourself. I know what it's like to be depressed. I know what it's like to have anxiety attacks. I know what it's like to just want to give up and throw in the towel. I know what it's like to just, uh, um, just uh, the only reason why I kept going and, and got up during the day and felt like a zombie because I had my son depending on me. I know what that's like. Would I have chosen to go through that? No, I would not have. I would not have chosen to go through it, but I am grateful that I chose to, that I did was selected to go through it. But watch this. I had to be willing to face that. I had to be willing to face that shame of being divorced. I had to be willing to face that disappointment of feeling like a failure. I had to be willing to face the fact that, hey, I didn't, I was feeling overwhelmed. I had to be willing to face the fact that I didn't feel like I was a good enough parent to my son. I had to be willing to face the fact that I felt like I failed my son when I needed help and I had to finally broke down and allowed my parents to help me. I had to be willing to face all of those things so that I can be in the space that I am right now. So my breakthrough, right, didn't happen until I was willing to be accountable to my trauma. A lot of the things happened to me that, that wasn't my, a, 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 a result of my choices. A lot of the things that are going to happen to you aren't going to be a result of your choices. Matter of fact, a lot of those things are not going to be a result of your choices, right? A lot of the, 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 the hardships that you, you have dealt with, a lot of the disappointments, a lot of the, 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 the feeling of, 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 of lack, a lot of, a lot of those things, you would not have anything to do with it. But I promise you this, just because you ain't had nothing to do with it, if you choose not to address it and deal with it, you will have to deal with the consequences of not choosing to deal with it, address it for the rest of your life. That is why it's so important for you to choose uh, or be willing to uh, address and be accountable to your trauma so that not only you can overcome it, but you can now put that in your rearview mirror so it won't become a hindrance for you or anchor to you and or dead weight to you that you're carrying around. Because the reality is you can choose to overcome it. You can choose to overcome it. So, hey, I hope this was helpful to you guys, man. I look forward to uh, coming back and seeing you guys next week. Uh, make sure you go and you support me on all the social media platforms uh, at The Conversation 9-8 uh, on YouTube, uh, The Conversation 9-8 uh, on Instagram, at 9-8 Conversation on Twitter, uh, on Facebook, The Conversation 9-8, and on TikTok at The Conversation underscore 9-8. I uh, appreciate it so much, man. I look forward to coming on and I appreciate you guys. Uh, it means more than what you know. Um, again, man, hey, uh, don't be a prison. Uh, don't be in prison. Uh, don't let fear imprison you. Uh, don't let fear, the fear of, of you dealing with your trauma, imprison you and allow you to stay in the space that you're in. Uh, because it is it is truly possible to overcome it. And I know a lot of things. Um, um, yeah, thank you. 
there's a lot of things men that we deal with and we suffer in silence on. And we we haven't told a soul. Things that we haven't even told our parents, things we haven't even told our significant others, things that we have carried by ourselves for a long time. And we try to push it down and we've tried to suppress it. And we don't want anybody to know about it. And we felt like we pushed forward and we've done enough work that, you know, it's, it's over with. But the reality is this, right? Just because you suppress it, you're still carrying it. Just because you buried it deep down mentally, you're still carrying the weight of it. And you can overcome that, but you have to be willing to address it because the reality is it's more than likely it's not your fault that it happened to you. But it's sure your responsibility on what you're going to choose to carry it around or get rid of it. And that's something that 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 if you are listening to this right now and you've been carrying that dead weight, you've been carrying that heaviness, you've been carrying that thing that not even your kids know about it, your spouse, your sisters, your brothers, your close friends. You've just been carrying that thing yourself. My prayer today is that whatever it may be that you can get the courage to get to your breakthrough, right? By being willing to be accountable to it and being accountable to it is not saying that you're responsible for it, but being accountable to it is saying, you know what? I'm going to address it. I'm going to address, I'm going to address it. I'm going to address that molestation. I'm going to address that, 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 that abandonment. I'm going to address that feeling of neglect. I'm going to address that that repeatedly disappointment of being let down by empty promises, by people that's in trusted uh, positions. I'm going to address that unwanted uh, passes, sexual pass that somebody did to me, but it made me feel uncomfortable, but they were uh, in a position of trust. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to address it. I'm going to address it by first saying, hey, I know that happened to me. Not going to be no longer. I'm not going to be like, hey, that didn't happen to me. Now, I'm going to address the 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 trauma that I deal with from the dysfunction that I came from, always having to move and never having stability. I'm going to address. Uh, uh, I'm going to address that. I'm a, I'm going to address and I'm not going to allow that to have uh, uh, impact over me anymore, because what we don't realize is what we don't address and what we don't deal with. It manifests itself in other ways. And we start to put up all these protect. Uh, uh, we feel like we pull up all of these barriers around us. But what that be, what that does is that in, hinders and impact our, our relationships that we have with the people in our lives. And many of us, we say, guess we say that I'm not um, uh, we say that. Yeah, I, I, I'm good. I'm this, that and the third. And our kids have to deal with the consequences of your unwillingness. Mm. Listen, and, and I say this and, and definitely get out of here, but the people closest to you will be the very ones that have to deal with the consequence of your unwillingness to be accountable to your trauma. The people closest to you are going to have to deal with the residue of your unwillingness to address it. Because what happens is you, we typically expect people to uh, cater to our uh, triggers and our triggers, many of our triggers are a result of our trauma. And because we are unwilling to address it and, and be accountable to our trauma, now we expect other people to compensate to make us feel comfortable, but then we don't see the impact that we're having on them. And we expect people to walk around on eggshells all because we're unwilling to address something that they had nothing to do with. So how fair is to them for what somebody else did, all because you may be scared and unwilling to uh, get your breakthrough by being accountable to your trauma. So I hope this was helpful, man. I look forward to talking to you guys. Uh, look forward to next week. You guys have a blessed and wonderful day. God bless.